Good afternoon, everybody. It's a cloudy and 80 degree day here in southern Delaware. And this is Kate's Garden Chicken and Cat Ramblings. We're going to take a look at their garden today. Some things are getting bigger. Here are the ladies having some fermented food served on a fancy plastic ball lid. It's a little more than I normally give them, but I, uh, I drained all the water off and realized, crap, I have a lot. So, I fed them from hand, which they really like doing that. But I like to put it on something soft and plastic for the little beaks. I already have one with a crooked beak, and I just, I don't like the idea of them having to peck hard at glass or porcelain or ceramic, so. Yeah, and, you know, it's always tasty when your sister's standing in it, too, but there they are. Mmm, yeah, you got it all over your beaks, and you're flinging it all over each other. They're so cute. They gotta wipe their beaks, but enough of the chickens. You guys are probably like, we see chickens all the time. So I pulled down the trellis. Some of the sticks broke, but like I said before, they were four years old. And so I've got these two empty motley rows that I need to, I don't know if I'll do it today, but probably will need to uh, weed and um, prep. I'm going to put a, a nice long row of carrots and then I'm going to put uh, a section that's uh, some basil and then I'm going to put some nasturtium and some coriander and some uh, marigolds in here to help with little bugs. When I pulled up the pea plants I saw a few little buggies and aphid things that I uh, that were you know being related but I just definitely don't want those things coming and visiting my beautiful cucumbers here. Yeah, like you can't see very much beauty right now. Because I've been upside down, hence the tone of my voice, winding cucumbers back through their trellises. So, let's step back and take a look here. Yeah, I'm not old place to broccoli. I think our weather's been too weird and some weird hot days, but yeah, it was an experiment with a hybrid broccoli that's supposed to like heat, but. So, cucumber, cucumber, Armenian cucumbers, big Armenian cucumber, Mexican cucumber. Now, I finally got this cage here, rescued from the peas, and I put it on this tomato plant, which is the slowest growing. I wonder why it's the slowest growing. Well, when I was putting the cage down, I hit something metal. I knew it was a metal and not a rock because I couldn't wiggle past it or or pivot around it and you, and you just know the sound of metal hitting metal so I'm wondering if this spot here a little bit lower that's always been so lush and green hence the reason I chose it for the garden isn't wh where maybe the septic cap is there like our neighbors over this direction uh, their septic tank, I mean, the concrete's a good six, eight, ten inches, maybe a foot below the ground level, but they have a long, long uh, uh, little pump out thing. I don't know, the cap is up higher or something like that. I don't know. I don't really know all my uh, septic lingo. Right there, this little divot right here, is where they found an old. Uh, I don't know if it's an old cesspool, but it looks like where maybe there was an old tank and they cut the thing off and buried a bunch of rock and stone down in there. And we were thinking that maybe they went off the house in that direction. But they could have come this direction. Um, our neighbor was saying left, but maybe left was facing away from the house. I don't know. I told Paul, hopefully he'll come out here and see if he can't find it. But Oh yeah, that's been an ongoing thing for several summers here. But I came to look at these beautiful, beautiful zucchini plants. So they are about four by four, if not a little bigger. You know, they're round. And the way they branch out, it's not like you can actually get a nice square measurement on them. But they're doing well. I got a couple, there's a little, little, little green zucchini on the end of that, those two uh, blossoms. Here's the yellow zucchini, getting bigger. Oh, yeah. 
long and skinny like a zucchini. Just this beautiful yellow color. Beautiful big leaves. Yeah. So there's the green beans. Finally putting on blooms. And they're about 18 inches tall right now. And like that, these are a bush bean. Very uh, slender, stringless bush bean. Um, I did put this kind of makeshift, not really trellis, but something for some of these little wilder limbs like this to grab onto if they need to. And just as support, but yeah, getting some blooms right there. I love little green bean blooms, they're cute little purple things. Sunflowers are doing good. After I mowed this week, yeah, you can tell by like this sunflower and these, they're different species. Some have more of a purple around the edge and kind of a little ridges, and then some are really smooth. So those may be the rose gold ones. I'll have to check up front, but I'm still doing some weeding around them. But uh, all in all, the seedling straw has been awesome. It had been real windy. I watered really good on Saturday. Or was it Friday? I can't remember. Now all the days run together. And uh, I didn't weed again till last night. And yesterday, uh, early afternoon, it was hot. And I was getting ready to go to the doctor. And I uh, came out to check because I was just... It's not like they were going to die between the time I went to the doctor and got back. But I just almost made myself late because I had to come check and see the moisture level. So I came over here to the zucchinis. And, you know, they draw a lot of water and reached underneath their little straw and then the cucumbers to fill the soil and the soil was still quite, quite, not super moist, but still damp, cool moist. So I knew they weren't, they weren't parched, but I still gave them a really good couple hours under the sprinkler last night. I think that there was a short video about that. So love putting the petunias in and petunias are a deterrent to some bugs too but i think they really need to be in the ground next to the, the plants but there's the okras coming up and i plucked out the only place where there was two growing together i pulled out the, the weakest one i didn't do it here and i let them get a little bigger sometimes you can let two grow together and they'll grow just fine and produce just fine and it all works out <gasps> look at this Nasty little grass coming up. Gosh, I hate this grass. I'm going to leave this weed mat down all winter this year and cover it really heavy with some heavier, like, you know, pine bark mulch over the places where I'm not growing, and then I'll move that out come winter. And I'll probably use more of this seedling mulch because it, uh, I don't know, maybe because it's smaller and it's finer, it sticks together, it lets water through, but it does, I mean, it lets water through, but it really um, is all natural, it's organic, and um, I just I just like it better. I think it's a, it's not like big and chunky, and you don't get little divots, and nothing has tried to dig it up. I don't know if that makes a difference, but anywho, another view of the garden here. I'm happy with how high the sunflowers are getting. And let's go up front and see how the flower garden's doing. They were supposed to possibly get some rain. Um, I still haven't cut that little thing off the bottom of that tree, but <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful green. I've been tempted to sneak over at night and cut out some pieces of that wheat or rye or whatever it is they've got over there. I'm pretty sure it's wheat. And uh, bring it over to the chickens, but... These lily pods here are getting a lot bigger. I'll walk over here, but I've tried to destroy this tree a couple times. I don't know what it is. It's dead now. Yep, there's crepe myrtle. No blooms yet. These lilies are getting close to being spent. Here's the white ones. They're doing well. Salvia's doing good. There's the uh, Stella Dor uh, Lily. These are doing pretty good. Yasmina, or blueberries and cream. You know, you can find the exact one and have a different name, so who knows, but 
they're pretty. I'm just not going to sit here and uh, video me deadheading them. That's already been seen and done. So these sunflowers over here are coming up slower, but they were planted later. Here's the wildflowers. I had some pink and little purple ones. Here's one of them that's got a little bud head. I'm sure it's going to bloom. And yeah, I had some purple and some orange ones pop up, but we'll see how they come out. I have been pulling this weed, this horrible weed that you guys have all heard me bitch and complain about, which is all interwoven in here. But I'm trying to be careful. And I need to go through, I have gone through a little bit with my clippers, but I don't know, this stuff is just, you pull it up and I could clear this whole thing out and the next day it would be covered in little green sprouts again. I don't know what it is. But I hate it, and I'm telling you guys again for the hundredth time, I hate it. So, I'm tempted. I'm paying, I'm going to buy me a little, down on Amazon, a little push mower. An old-fashioned just push mower. You know, something that, uh, I don't know, I think it might be work better for me. Because I could, it's going to be smaller, you know. All I have to do is stop pushing and it turns off. If I think I'm getting too close to something and I don't have to you know, worry about starting it or fueling it or any of that. But flower guards doing okay. The roses are starting to put on some more. I need to come out and clip their dead heads, which you don't have to on uh, knockout roses, but it looks better if you do. Um, so it's, it's around noon and I've got a full afternoon planned. As long as it stays overcast and shady like this, and maybe after three we'll get some rain. Um, I'm still gonna go put some shorts on and a hat and come out here and uh, maintenance my gardens. But ink, the yucca is pretty much spent. I think a few passing photos of their blossoms, but the uh, hibiscus, which is still not in the ground, is doing great still in its pot, of course. And I'm just amazed because I haven't given any bloom booster this summer and it's just throwing blooms out like crazy and she's about gosh four or five years old now I think this is her fourth summer yeah like cars I always refer to plants as she's also it's just one of those things so anyway there's some garden and just only a little bit of chicken and I know yesterday was a garden, and that was just me watching the garden get watered, and I did find that strangely satisfying. But then again, at my age, we do find something strangely satisfying. Not what you guys think, because I don't really think I remember how to do that. I remember the mechanics of that, but anyway, that's a whole different subject, and uh, I'm not a pervert. I actually don't really think about it. I kind of like make fun of it more that I am been celibate for so long. And I think that's just because, I don't know, it's such a big deal to so many people. And the fact that it's not a big deal to me, and I don't really miss that part of life, I just find it amusing. Because they, they never tell you that. One day you're going to get old and uh, you're just really not going to give a shit about sex. <laughs> And when you got animals, like perverted cat kittens. Oh, first blossom on one of the tomato plants. These are the Floridade tomatoes. Wasn't one, it was just when we happened to get seeds from Paul ordered a whole bunch of uh, heirloom, organic, non-GMO seeds, and these came. And I know they're a bushier tomato, and they're very prolific, hardy, tough tomato, I guess, you know. If you're gonna grow up in Miami and be designed at those universities I'm assuming that you're a pretty tough darn tomato plant so I do go through and uh, do some culling of the older bigger lower leaves that I know are not going to produce flowers and are not going to really shade the fruit I do and they call suckering and I do pull them off and pop them off I'm anxious to see how this Mexican cucumber does. I'm anxious to see these little miniature tiny watermelon looking things. But yeah, here's the tomato plant. I don't know if you can hear this. 
probably not from the rattling, but that was it hitting metal. So, gosh, I hope that uh, my desire for the, the best spot in the yard turns out to be where the septic tank is. I mean, we were able to maintenance it with, with chemicals and, you know, it's just the two of us and we don't flush paper or anything like that, but, oh my God, I'm just so sick of dealing with it. But, you know, after almost $500 to get a cat fixed and poor little Della was pregnant and some people may not like that, but we had them abort the little fetuses. She wasn't very far along, but she needed to be fixed and she's such a small cat. Um, and it was her brother who impregnated her. Um, we haven't been able to get him fixed because where we normally take the male cats wouldn't take care of him, do his neutering because he has a, a grade two, three heart murmur. So we're gonna have to take him to the other vet, but you know, five, 600 bucks a month, we can only do, you know, every other month. So hopefully the septic will be uh, next, but now it's time to get him neutered. He's becoming a bully, and not because he's a mean kitty. I think it's just hormones. But he's picking on the bigger cats. And anyway, so the girls obviously didn't finish their uh, their permanent food dinner. Flies are enjoying it, but the sun's come back out, so I'll probably carry that into their their pen in the shady spot, which is where they're at right now. Say bye, ladies. They like to hang out in the door, in the entrance. Scissor coop and under that leaning board. Alright, well, that's it. Garden's growing, chickens are growing. I'm growing. Life's good. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe.